we as VAG, we're more sort of helping out in the process for the pilots, but the real work is being done uh, by Stan, has been done by Stan, who doesn't work at VAG, but works at the city of Amsterdam. And I think it's a nice example of how a city government can be progressive and, and be part of the change that we're looking to see. So I wanted to have mentioned that. And with that, hand over to Stan, unless you wanted to introduce anything else. Otherwise, I'll hand it over to you. Yes. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jaromil and Sander. Um, yeah, so I was already introduced. That's handy. Um, so we can immediately start. Um, I'm a developer working for the city of Amsterdam. I'm here with some colleagues. And I'm here to show you this uh, very exciting box, which you might have seen uh, already on stage today. Um, I have to still start some things up, but I'll do that in a bit. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, the city of Amsterdam, as part of the Decode uh, project, had an assignment, and I kind of summarized it being performing a pilot that gives shape uh, to digital identity and makes it tangible. Um, and the nice thing is that this this whole box is kind of like a... It wasn't intended, it wasn't like the, the starting off point, but eventually uh, it was the thing that became most tangible and uh, it became something that, you know, it's really nice to use uh, when you talk about digital identity and about uh, attribute-based uh, verification. So, let me see. Um, yeah, so the pilot was pretty, I, I wanted to like uh, tell something about the pilot, it was pretty short. Um, we had a few months where we worked on um, making something work. That was one of our uh, goals and also uh, to make it look nice and make it be f user friendly and uh, make it in a way that people understand what are attributes uh, and what is a digital wallet. Uh, so we uh, came up with some different scenarios where you could use a digital identity, as you can see. Um, for example, you could use it uh, when you pick up a package at the post office. Uh, they check your name. Um, and like the example given by uh, Andrea with the 18 plus, um, they, you only want, to sh only want to share your name because you don't have to share any other information, just your name because it's your package. Um, the same is for, for example, local business. They want to give discounts to uh, local residents and you can prove that you are living in, for example, uh, Amsterdam Noord. Um, or you uh, have a, um, uh, you go to the hospital to visit someone and you don't have to write in uh, like, okay, I'm here to visit my family member. You can just prove, okay, I have the right to visit and that's it. So eventually we went for the use case 18 plus. Uh, so validating someone of being 18 plus at the bar and Andrea already uh, elaborated on that. And that's quite nice because then we can continue into how would that look like? What, what would this interaction look like? Um, we had a few requirements, which was uh, the data that was shared had to be valid data, it had to have a valid source. Um, there had to be a form of claim verification, uh, so attribute-based claim verification. Um, there was the issue of how to connect uh, a digital identity to a physical person, because uh, it's really easy to give someone your phone and they then pretend to be you. Um, and of course, a smooth user experience. And now I have to see, uh, let's see. Um, so, few of the uh, choices that we made um, for data source of the valid data source, uh, we had an option to uh, get a connection to the BRP, which is the um, storage of uh, personal data. It's managed by every municipality. Uh, we didn't uh, end up using it because it was quite hard to connect with in like a short period of time. So uh, that's how we got to the passport, which has an NFC chip in it, which you can read to get uh, valid data. Wait, I'm gonna drink something. Are there any clean glasses? Ah, uh, thank you, Sofia. Uh, okay, so data storage. Of course, we didn't want to 
store uh, this personal data uh, on the central server. So uh, we want to store it locally on a smartphone. Um, also, for a very short development cycle, we chose to make a web app instead of a native app. And eventually, uh, we want to add some encryption. So we have some very basic, very basic implementation of Zenroom, um, which I will show you later. Okay, so the prototype elements are uh, the box, which uh, is a password scanner and it's the way to get on board, uh, the web app, and uh, a very simple session manager, which is just an API uh, where the data gets sent through. Okay, so the onboarding box. What's inside of this thing? Uh, I can see if I can uh, turn it around, this works. So uh, there's an NFC reader down here, uh, a camera up here, and there's not a Raspberry Pi, but a pretty like, overpowered Intel NOC for some simple things, but yeah, it works. Um, and of course, a, a nice little monitor. And now, this is the data source. Uh, in my case, this is a Dutch passport. And as you can see on the bottom, it has a little symbol which indicates there is an NFC chip inside. And this is pretty fun because you can read the data from this NFC chip. Um, there are quite some apps in the App Store which you can use like to scan it through your phone if you want to try it. Uh, pretty interesting that you know there's a full color picture uh, on there because on the picture, at least in the Dutch one, it's uh, it's black and white, so there's a color version of the picture inside. Um, yeah, so the how this data is store, uh, stored is defined by the International Civil Aviation Organization, and uh, this is very like well documented, of course. So that means there's different libraries who uh, uh, can read the data from this uh, NFC chip. I use a library called PyPassword, um, which is written in Python, and it's nice because I just wanted to do everything in Python because I know Python, and I had five months. Um, uh, but it was a bit of a hassle, I have to say. Like I had to modify some things inside the library to make it work with the scanner we had, and it's a very old project. Uh, I think the last update was in 2013 and was built by uh, some people in, from the University of Ghent in Belgium in 2008. So, But it still worked, at least in Python 2.7, so that's also a bit of an issue. Um, so that's why I put here, we should, I sh could move, should move to something that's more supported, which is, for example, uh, uh, JMRTD, which is also used, I believe, by the uh, Dutch authorities who check the driver's license that they use this library, actually, if I'm correct. Could be not correct. Um, as Jaromir already mentioned, uh, what's interesting is that this data on the NFC chip is encrypted, and the key is right on top of the card. <laughs> um, and it's not so very uh, 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 scary because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's encrypted with a document ID, uh, the date of birth, your date of birth, and the expiration date of the document. And this together forms the decryption key for the data on the NFC chip. So that's where the camera comes in with some OCR, which is also interesting. Back to the light. Oh, I can do this. Boom. Okay, and uh, the, uh, this machine-readable zone, then you input into the PyPython library. Uh, using the PyPython library, you can like uh, import this, and uh, then the NFC, uh, the NFC reader is ready to uh, get the data out. And then eventually, I said I had a very simple Zenroom impl implementation. So what I did is generate a key pair on the phone, uh, because eventually the, you want the data from the box to the phone. Uh, uh, it's the generated key pair on the phone. Uh, the public key is sent to the box. Uh, it encrypts the data, which is read out of the NFC chip. It sends the encrypted data back, and with the private key on the phone, it's decrypted again. Not very interesting because, well, it's not, it's not super secure, but it was really fun to work with Zenroom and to work with these scripts. And I'll show you 
the content of the scripts later. Okay, so this is the starting off point. Uh, it's uh, uh, find the box, uh, create your digital identity. So the box is found right here. And oh, yeah, this is nice, but then I, I like this. Um, yeah, so um, I have to click open this and it will say, it will give me some instructions. So, so this is the passport scanner. This is the passport scanner. So basically, let me check. Okay, what we're seeing on TeamViewer is yeah. what is shown on this screen. Yeah. And uh, too bad we don't have a camera here. But what you see here is exactly what's, what's shown on this uh, 10 inch screen. It's true. Yeah. Am I that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so place the passwords, passports with the face facing upwards, with the photo facing upwards. I do this. And now it starts the OCR. So it's going to read the uh, machine readable zone on the bottom if it works. Sometimes uh, the positioning is a bit off, but it works. So uh, now it continues into retrieving the password data. Sorry? Via NFC. Via NFC, yeah. So like you can hear the beep and then it starts doing something. Yeah, it works, great. And so the box is telling me, please scan the onboarding code. Okay, so on one side, where you read the scan onboarding code, this is what happens on the box. Let me help so we have the, the audio. So what, what we see here, where we read scan onboarding code, this is what I'm seeing now on the screen of the box. That's exactly the same thing I'm seeing. And what we see here is what you would normally see if you connect with your phone to the website of the passport scanner, which currently happens to be the code.amsterdam. Yeah, so anyone could do this right now. You could visit decode at Amsterdam yeah. and you would click the scan and warning code and you will get uh, your, but if, for demonstration purposes to yeah. fix everything here, I'm gonna. So we pretend this is his phone, that this the is camera phone. is the camera of the phone. It's a very modern phone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is gonna be, yeah, this is gonna work. Hey. Yay. Boom. Wow. Boom. So here we go. So I quickly take this out. Um, so Stan, we can call this multi-platform because it worked on your phone and your PC as well. Yeah, it's amazing. You can hang around and scan your stuff with your PC on the box. That's nice. It's a web app, so it just works. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm going to... As you can see, we have a nice uh, color picture of me and some... Uh, personal information, um, which was on the NFC chip of this um, uh, passport, and now is stored in the local storage of the web browser uh, of this computer, but it would uh, normally be on your phone. So I'll just do it again, because I'm gonna give a nice demo of the uh, claim verification I could do this here with you, Sofia. We can try this anyone as well, I guess. Should we do it now? Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready to display your information? I have a new one, a really brand new passport. You just bought it. Yeah, I got it like a week ago. Yeah, yeah, he's a public figure. Plus, he's Italian Iranian, and now we can prove that his passport is real. Yeah, so there is also a way to verify, like there's keys online which then verify the data on the card. Uh, I haven't implemented this. Um, okay, so we need the, so here we go. Oh, something like this. Yeah, no, it was a, okay. Um, yeah, so I have to cheat it a bit, I guess. Let's see where the... Yeah, so it's, for, it's waiting for a uh, NFC chip. 
Ah, okay. She did it. So the NFC chip is on the other side of the cover. So it's reading the encryption key. Why? Because it's too thick, the passport, it doesn't read through? No. Uh, well, I can show you in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Don't open the cover. And don't disassemble. The cover. Disassemble. <laughs> disassemble. No. <laughs> yeah. I could. Yeah. So now I do some real quick debugging. <laughs> ah. Wait. What, what is it doing? It's waiting for a card. Oh. So that that means that it actually reading encryption key. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Wait, let's see. Hmm. What does it say? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, sorry for cursing. Oh, okay. It works. Exciting. Even oh. with an Italian-Iranian um, passport. Wow. Uh, Puria, do you have Android? Do you have Android phone? Okay, would you like to onboard yourself? Because I'm not... So we can see that it also works on someone else's phone. Okay, so that it's not really nice into frame now, but makes it look really cool because there's code going on. The so they have just two rooms. Yeah, so decode at Amsterdam. And you have to go to decode.amsterdam. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I was working on implementation that you could just scan it and then it's easy. You could, and then you would forward a link to. No, it's just just a, a URL. And you can use this one if you like. Oh, and okay. uh, erase it later. Is it? Oh, it's uh, incognito. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh oh. Sure. <gasps> oh. Oh. Oh, someone stole your information. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait. Oh, okay. Wait. Can we see? So you now you live in Trento. Yes. <laughs> So it works with, what is this, Iranian? No, this is Italian. Italian passport, hey, that's great. My Iranian is not here. Does it have, does it, do they have NFC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have Puria. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, that's great. Um, Stan, I think that it's important that you go through the steps you're doing. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 sorry. For people who have never seen this before. Yeah, so, true. Uh, what Automatic done, mode. Yeah. yeah, what we've done now is we've scanned the passport. Then uh, we scan the QR code produced by the box. And by doing this, information was stored on the phone. Yes. So, so what is the next step is going to be? So what the web app actually is, it's, it's two-parted. So on the one hand, it serves as a digital wallet, so a way to store the uh, uh, the personal data uh, and to later uh, verify your identity. And on the other hand, it's also uh, a way to ask questions, to uh, retrieve attributes. So the what I do here is I like you have these two views, and. Uh, so on the one hand, it's your personal identity, and on the other hand, it's a question generator. So this, for example, could be a bar. And I always use the example bar Janssen, because this just sounds very Dutch. And uh, uh, you can ask a few questions, and they are all related to information that can be retrieved. So in this case, it's uh, a question about age, name, or sex. Yeah. Okay, so basically what you're doing now, you're showing the web app in the phone of a bar owner mm -hmm. who wants to know something about the person standing in front of yeah. the bar. Yeah, so in this case, I'm the bar and uh, 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 Puria is coming up to me and he said, I would like a beer. And then my so task... Very likely going to happen. Very likely. <laughs> and then I look at him and I'm like, are you 18? So... 
and, and that's where the whole process starts. So I'm going to say I'm Bar Janssen, and I'm going to uh, see if uh, the person standing in front of me is 18. And that's the only information I need to know, because that's the only information that's necessary to serve someone a beer. Uh, so then I uh, click on, uh, uh, what did I click? Ask question. Uh, and uh, it will show Bar Janssen asks, uh, is the age higher or equal to 18? So what we see there is what would, will appear on the phone of the bar owner of Bar Janssen yeah. when the bar owner wants to know if the person who wants to buy beer is above 18. Correct. So uh, this is you? Oh, this is your phone, but it, it's him. Yeah. <laughs> now it's mine. I <laughs> it doesn't work with my fingerprint. Oh, okay. Now it works. Okay, so uh, Puria has his, his identity wallet open and he has one button he can click and it's verify identity. Yeah. Yeah. Verify identity. Verify identity. So you can click the verify identity button yeah. and it opens up the camera again. Yeah. And I can scan the QR code. And yeah. he retrieves the QR code. I will have I have some screenshots uh, later, which like shows. It it's asked me. Bart Johnson's ask uh, age is uh, greater than eighteen or equal. Do you want to share this information? And I have two buttons: yes or no. Okay. Okay. So so this is an interesting <laughs> step. Hey, can you can you? Uh, Hold it, hold it up because um, something that we uh, I talked about in the presentation is how do I connect uh, what's showing on the phone to the person that's standing there, and we chose to um, show the passport, uh, the pass photo of the person on their phone. So not it's not sent to me. The only thing that I retrieve is 18, and I will ask him or her. Um, can you please show your phone to verify that this is actually you? And we also added like a randomly generated color uh, that verifies that it's about the same session and it's not a screenshot that's being shown. So yeah, well, I, yeah, you owe, I owe you a beer, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, that was exciting. Let's see where I was. So uh, here I have it, kind of like this is the the. The process of the Barianse. So a question is generated. Uh, they wait for a scan. The scan happens. They're waiting for an answer, and there's a verification. And on the other side, uh, it starts actually with the the, the profile, the, the 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 personal wallet. Uh, the code is scanned. The uh, a question is retrieved. Uh, yeah, we didn't show. I could because uh, sh if if you choose no um, on this screen of the bar or the person like anyone, it will show uh, like a like a stop sign and saying uh, the request for data was denied. So someone can say I don't want to share this information. That's an option. It's show me the codes. Ah, okay, yeah. Sorry. What if the person is not over oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. That's. Um, uh, yeah. So the person can say yes. I want to share this information. And he's not over eighteen. Uh, yeah. That's a good. I. Uh, I. I really like made the screenshots happy flow. Um, but yeah, I, it works. Yeah. I could show this. Would you? I can. Yeah. Like, we have. Do we have time? No. Okay. We have 15, 15 minutes and I recommend, Only. yes, I recommend okay. you go through the source code and... Uh, yeah, okay, so trust me that yeah, you say yes and then it's denied anyway. Yeah. Like, so the, the, the data is not, like, so you are, the person isn't 18, yeah. It's a different state. Yeah, yeah, so three states basically, yeah. Um, show me the code, okay. Uh, I want to show you a few things. 
Okay. I will change. Um, yeah, so I prepared some small things. First of all, I want I can show how the uh, OCR works. So is that here? Yeah. So that's uh, the reading of the machine readable zone. And there are some interesting things that happening there. <laughs> um, I will do this. I will do this. Yeah, so yeah, anyone, everyone can see me. Oh, it has some nice like repeating in the background. We'll do this. And uh, so this is basically what happens inside the box uh, when it's waiting for a passport. And what I can do is I can give it this passport. And it's gonna, on the right side, it's gonna show you some things. And it's gonna try to see if it's a valid uh, machine readable zone. It's gonna try, it's gonna try. Let's show some difficult things. Maybe the lighting is a bit off. I think that's one of the, yeah, maybe the focus also. Uh, but Stan, I think that what uh, the audience ah. would like to see yeah. is uh, if I want to extend this, if I want to modify it, yeah. if I want to make my own version of this, where do I start? Uh, you mentioned that you use some libraries. You mentioned that uh, uh, you, there, it works with Python 2.7. I, I, I guess that those are the things that uh, we like to have on record now. Okay. So for the uh, the checking of the MRZ, I actually use uh, something that's called Passport I, and that I think uses Tesseract. Um, uh, and this this you can just input frames, and it will try to recognize the uh, MRZ, and it will it will try to make it uh, look uh, check if it's valid, because uh, behind every uh, number, this is like interesting because behind every number there's a a checksum. So it will uh, make some like calculations to see if uh, the checksum is valid. Uh, one of the challenges like that's nice to add is that it's very unclear to read if it's uh, something is an O or a zero. Uh, if you would see it, it's crazy. So uh, what we actually like what my colleague did <laughs> is uh, made like a recursive uh, uh, thingy which just replaces every O with a zero and then zero with an O to check. Uh, and it does it every time. So it's, yeah, I don't know how they do that in like other systems. They have really like high quality OCR, I guess, because it's crazy that they didn't put a point in the zero. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so that's one thing. Um, yes, uh, more code. So yeah, this O zero thing. Um, the yeah. Yeah, so the, the it's like <laughs> the aviation, the aviation like association came up with it. So I don't know. Yeah, um, the MRTD. Let me see. I have to. Have to see. Hmm. So for this, I use PyPassport, PyPassport, uh, and it manages everything. Actually, everything from the connection to the NFC reader uh, to the reading uh, of the data on the passport. So um, you just give it the the document number, the um, birth date, and the expiration date, and uh, it will start uh, to check if there's an NFC um, uh, chip which can be read and it will start to do some magic. Um, uh, something that's interested in, oh yeah, uh, th this is something interesting about a passport. It's, I have to say, it's not the most ideal uh, source of data because it's uh, some things, for example, is that uh, the birth date is stored not with, uh, so in this format, but it's stored with just two years. 
So it's uh, if you're born in 69, um, yeah, I, I can go through this whole thing. I documented it, but you don't really know. It's like not really future proof if it's 1969 or in the future if it's 2069. So what I actually did, I made a, <laughs> I made another like fix uh, to uh, default everything with an adjustment of 10 years. So in this case, like this is when I tested it. So if it's 2008, it will still default to 2008. If it's like uh, uh, 08, the data, if it's 09, it will go back to 1909. Because if you implement this in real life, you will have people who are uh, like really old people and really young people both have to use it. So like you have to know in which century they're born. Uh, and this is not covered in the passport. So yeah, it's not an ide ideal source of information. <laughs> And also, for example, the name, if you have a really long name, it's formatted, uh, or like if you, if you have a name in, uh, uh, in a non-Latin uh, alphabet, in Arabic, for example, it's going to be a difficult one because they, they have some uh, way to format that. So it's, it was nice to, to use it, but it's, I won't recommend it as like a, really, like, a, like a really valid source of information. Disclaimer there. Um, Where is this presentation here? Oh yeah, send room. Well, um, oh. I, 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 I would ask you to go through the repos, to go through the libraries you used mm -hmm. to point at uh, where the CAD files are. So if someone wants to extend it, yeah, they can uh, they can get started. Okay. Because I think that we have like we have like seven. Minutes. Oh, okay, so we have covered general in the previous yeah. uh, presentation. Oh, uh, okay. Don't worry about. It. Yeah. So, like, you know it, but it's nice. Um, so, actually, everything is on the Amsterdam GitHub here, and then everything starts with decode, and then the main repository is. Let's let's see passport. This one. And uh, basically everything is on here. So this is kind of like the main, the main uh, repository. And what I added here uh, is all the code to make this work. So also the modified version of the Pi Passport uh, to work with this specific NFC reader. Uh, and I added just all the details of what NFC reader it is and all the versions um, and the way to test it. And also um, my colleague, made this box, uh, 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 she laser cut it, like some uh, uh, plexi, uh, some uh, acrylic, and all the cut files are also in there. So if you want to recreate this thing, uh, uh, you can do it like really step by step and you will have the exactly same setup. What did you, you mentioned you use a modified version of Pi Passport. Yeah. What, what did you have to patch and why? Uh, let me see. I. Uh, put that here, password reading. Yeah, it, it was just a very tedious process of trying things. And uh, for some reason, there was some like protocol I had to change here. And there was just like code, which is just missing. There was just like a, like an assignment of a variable, which is just missing. It's not, yeah. So that, that kind of stuff. And uh, when you read the passport, uh, some data... Yeah, I have some, I have some, I, the, everything which is, uh, um, which I had uh, changed is also documented here. Um, it's not all in the same repo, but I will make sure that I make a nice overview where everything and also the thing, I made some changes to the codes, uh, some patches for uh, today, and I will also include those. So then everything's there, I just need to make it tidy. Um, and also what I have, yeah, it's really scattered, I'm sorry, but on GitLab, uh, I made a, uh, it's very easy. You can do like the Docker Compose dev uh, up and it will uh, just uh, run for you uh, a local version of the, uh, the app and the very simple session manager, which is just a Python flask thing, which uh, 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 sends all the data through. So you can immediately just do Docker Compose up if after you build the web app and then you can play around with it. Yeah. And I will also include that. I can, yeah. Uh, yeah, people know what, how to work that. It's pretty straightforward. 
Um, there are still some people here. Any questions? Well, you said you, you used for this experiment, you said uh, I'm just, I used the basic parts of Sandroom. Yeah. And that I only had uh, five months to work on this. Um, now we're finishing the three year project of Decode. Um, what would you have done more if you had more time on this experiment? So I would just implement all these amazing things, uh, which are like I think would be very uh, it just fits right in, like the storing of the public key, the verification of the data, yeah, that just implementing the new things of Senroom. Yeah. Uh, maybe regarding the when you acquire the data from the chip. Uh, then you generate a proof to the bar, Johnson, let's say. That proof is just a signature of with the private key that you generated at the at the onboarding process. So it's like, just maybe you can elaborate on what oh. is the proof actually. Yeah, so uh, the, the, what happens is that you retrieve the question and there's some very like basic logic in the app which uh, uh, checks the data on your local on, on the phone. Uh, for example, if you ask the age, it will uh, see, okay, so the question is, is age above 18? It will take the, the a birth, a date of birth and it will see if, the, if this person is 18 now and uh, it will say, it will give a check on the, on the client side. Uh, it will say yes and then this, this, this yes is sent back to the bar. So it's 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 not very yeah it's it's pretty very plain it's not very, there's not much encry much encryption happening there yeah okay because the acquisition is just like so i could if i can tamper my phone i can just modify yeah. that data right? yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, okay yeah. just the question was like how verifiable was the data i was presenting to the yeah bar so bar. so that part is really we took some like, we took a lot of liberties there to show how this interaction of uh, uh, attributes works, uh, so that's yeah, and also you, the, the 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 stuff is stored plain text on local storage on your local storage, so you can also just tamper with that. Uh, so that's where the new functions of Sendroom would come in, which would kind of like fill up that gap uh, in this verification of the attributes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, actually, I do have a question because um, I wrote up the description of the workshop, and in the description I wrote, uh, it says that uh, the whole system can work offline, which it cannot do now, but I believe that it can be made to work with uh, not too large amount of work. Because um, if the, um, the progressive web app uh, that runs on the phone of the user and on the phone of the bar could become an app, once the user has scanned his own code and stored it on the app, then the verification process of answering, uh, answering the question can be done offline, I believe. Yes. Okay, so I was uh, I was wrong, but uh, that is uh, a very foreseeable upgrade to this system that could be done with relatively yeah. uh, little work. Yeah, and I think I think that's nice about this project is that like, it's not perfect. It's not like the whole encryption is not like completely thought out, but the interaction is there, and the way and and the app is there, and the the data retrieving of the data is there. So these uh, new functions which are generated in in Zenroom can be implemented very easily. And I think that's nice, a uh, nice way of working where you, uh, on the one hand, work on the really like the details of uh, the claim verification and the attribute distribution, or the, the attribute, uh, 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 the giving away the attributes, but at the same time work towards something that really is physical and you sh scan a code and you get uh, uh, a verification, so yeah. It could be, yeah, it could work perfectly offline, yeah.